Hi, my name is Rolina, and today I want to give you a story of me and journalism. So it all started on one hot summer day during living skills class, and my teacher threw this question to us. What are GMOs? And no, it does not stand for OMG, it spells backwards. However, GMOs are, stands for genetically modified organisms. When this question was thrown through to the class, a debate arose in the class, and the general consensus was that GMOs are deleterious or harmful to our health. We learned about the Seralini study published in 2012, which reported that when rats were fed genetically modified corn, they started developing tumors. So I decided that day that I really didn't want to get giant tumors. And even if I was going to get them, I didn't want to get them from eating corn. I mean, at least it has to be chocolate or something tastier. So I went back home and did my research. To my surprise, I found that after Seralini's paper was published, the methods and conclusions met with harsh criticism from the scientists in the field. This discovery shocked me. Since I always believe that science is irrefutable and precise, at that moment I realized, oh, maybe not all science journals are necessarily facts. Um, in, prominent scientists in the field questioned the method used in, in Seralini's paper and the statistical strength of his argument. In Seralini's paper, he used only 10 samples, which is clearly not a very good sample size if you have ever studied statistics. However, this paper by Seralini caught a national attention and ignited a national and then global media frenzy. And it wasn't just talk. These chain of events led to real action. Kenya, an African pioneer in genetically modified organisms, issued an indefinite ban for all genetically modified organisms. This, however, over the last few years, uh, subsequent, uh, subsequent uh, research by other scientists around the world showed that actually genetically modified corn, genetically modified organism, does not have any adverse effects on rats or animals. Um, in, re in a very recent meta-study, the, in the re very recent meta-study, they studied 147 studies on genetically modified corn and genetically modified organisms and found that genetically modified organisms actually cause benefits in terms of higher yields and cost saving in agricultural production. Now, that's not to say that genetically modified organisms had no adverse effects on our society. However, this is us this does warn us that science is often a debate. And even, even among the experts, even the smartest, the most experienced, uh, even the most experienced scientists may often disagree with each other. When we too quickly get excited about flashy headlines and move to action before checking our resources, we may often make irreversible damages. So, if all scientists were to tell the truth and held responsibility for their own findings, are we going to be able to trust the headlines that we read? Well, let's look at some data. First, this graph shows, compares the number of active Facebook users with the yields of, on 10-year Greek government bonds. As you can see, as Facebook users increases, the Greek de uh, government bond increases as well. Therefore, we can conclude Facebook caused the Greek debt crisis. Second graph. Um, this one compares the number of pirates per year with the global average temperature. As you can tell from the graph, as the number of pirates decreases per year, the global average temperature actually increases. Therefore, we can conclude pirates caused the global warming. Finally, in this graph, it compares the ice cream consumptions and murder rates. As ice cream consumption increases, the murders increases as well. Therefore, we can conclude ice cream caused murders. Each graph has a very 
strong regression line. However, are you sure that these causative relationships are reliable? If you believe so, maybe think twice before ordering an ice cream next time so you can prevent yourself from becoming a potential murderer. These obviously bizarre and false conclusions remind us of the strongest warning that we learn, learned in statistics class. Correlation does not imply causation. Even if there is a causative relationship between the two variables, it is often something very complicated involving a dozen of other factors. When we too quickly get excited about flashy headlines, it is, it is often possible that we may make a false consumptions on the variables. In fact, in recent, metas, uh, in recent so, uh, most, statistics, most statistics for social science are often collected through observations from which a false co cost of relationship can be easily concluded. Well, now, we actually, scientists are not the only ones to blame. A scientific journalists are actually, actually takes complicated, complicated statistical arguments and turn them into flashy headlines to capture your attention. In a journalism class I took during the summer, we were told to write headlines or articles that are unique and recent, promotes a positive motivation, and most importantly, Incur it catches the reader's attention. So it is not hard to imagine that if all, if that science journalists, journals are, can be easily, uh, can be easily, can be widely exaggerated if the purpose of journalism is to get the most views. Well, every morning we wake up, we check the Google News, Twitter, Facebook. We, ex we get our news from friends, from the social media, from the internet. And we accept what we read as facts. However, after all, it is published by a scientist with a PhD. However, what we don't realize is that there is a process by which science becomes news and news become rumors. It looks something like this. First, a scientist published an article about his hypothesis on what he might think and what it might, what he might, what it might mean. And then it picks up by a journalist. A per journalist pops out and picks it up and writes a sensational headline about what the scientist wrote after a quick interview with the scientist and before actually ever reading the paper. Then a second journalist reads the paper from the first journalist and writes an article about what he think about the first article. These articles get spread onto the internet, picked up by local news, shared by friends. So in this game of telephone, facts gets mixed constructed, quotes taken out of context, and conclusions are often dramatized. So if you want to read about cutting edge science, we must do so with a grain of salt. Think critically. Track down the original story. Hear both sides' argument. And remember that scientific findings are not necessarily facts. It is our responsibility as readers, as citizens, to check our resources and reconsider the credibility of each article, each paper that we read before spreading it onto the social media. And it's the responsibility of journalists to appreciate the power that they withhold in controlling the media, and which may, which may, which may lead to irreversible damages if used inappropriately. Thank you.